All right, so if you're following along, now's your time to turn, uh, tune in. I'm going to switch back over to Firefox. Remember, I'm 10.2 and Phil's 10.0 uh, with all of his frustrations. And so uh, let's just make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, I'm going to go back over the table of contents, and I'm going to make sure that lesson one, creating activities, in, is in blue. The big thing that we've been seeing in 10.2 is it's very visually oriented. So there's going to be a lot of either colors or indicators, icons to let you know what's going on. If it's not blue, just simply click on lesson one, creating activities. You'll notice over here in this bubble, there's a one there letting you know that you have one new activity in there. But we're going to create another activity. The activity we're going to create is the Dropbox assignment, much like Phil created in the uh, previous demonstration. So just like before, instead of going up to the assessment area and choosing Dropbox, that's the old way. No, no, we're in 10.2, and the new way is using the new button. So I'm going to click on that new button. You got to be careful. Let me hit escape for a second. Make sure up here it says Lesson 1 Creating Activities. If it doesn't say that, then when you click on this new button, it's going to be creating that new activity in whatever module you're in. Okay? So Phil created a Dropbox. We're going to create a Dropbox by clicking New Dropbox. Now we're going to give it a title. Like I said, since we're sharing this sandbox, let's follow the same simple rules. Let's call this Lesson Space 01 dash assignment, and then right next to assignment, give it a space, and in parentheses, your initials. This way, we don't sort of fringe on somebody else's creating a Dropbox folder. And remember, this is the sandbox, so please have fun, play with it. You're not going to hurt anything. Students won't see it, and if you get in trouble, I'm only a phone call away. All right, so where it says instructions, I'm just going to tell them, see, attach. Let me scroll down to the bottom, and I'm just going to hit publish. And you might ask yourself, but wait a minute, Nick, when Phil created his Dropbox assignment, he was able to add due dates and grade, grade items and give it a score. Where's that in 10.2? Well, just relax. One thing at a time. First, give it a title. Give it instructions. When you hit publish, the next screen you're going to see is going to allow you to adjust those properties. So over here on the right side, if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to have date restrictions. You see it's already published. If you wanted to turn it off because you're not ready for it, if you click on that triangle pointing down, you can see draft. I'm going to leave it published so my students can see it. But underneath that, I'm going to click Add Dates. And I can see Add a Due Date. Nice and simple. Click once. And let's make this assignment due this Friday. So where it says December 4th, 2013, let me click on that once. And then I'm going to click on the 6th of December. And if all goes well, the date should change. I'm okay with 5 p.m. If you want to make it 11.59, just go ahead and type 11.59. But I'm good for that. And all I'm going to do is hit Enter. Just to sort of confirm the changes, nothing might happen. You still might have the insertion point in there. No big deal. If you come down, if you keep on scrolling down, if you click update, you'll get a little dial going around in circles, letting you know that it's a work in progress. But down the lower right corner, you should get that uh, confirmation that it was successful. Okay, do you see where it says assessment, the category there? And then it says no graded assignment. Hey, when you hover over it, you got that little and again, so go ahead and click on that. And how many points? Phil, I believe you made yours 10 points, right? That's correct. All right, well, I'm going to be the same. I'm going to click in that box and type in 10. And then underneath that, I have a drop down box. I'm going to click on that. And just like Phil, we already created an entry in our grade book called Lesson 1 Assignment. However, if you wanted to create a new grade item, that's where that plus symbol comes in. Now we're going to save that for another class when we get into 10.2 uh, advanced features, if you will. But it's no different than what you've done in 10.0. Just click on there and you'll be greeted with the same screen that you're greeted in 10.0. But for now, in the interest of saving time, we're going to click on that arrow pointing down and we're going to choose Lesson 1 Assignment. And we're going to choose Save. Should have got your confirmation letting you know that that item was done successfully. 
Let's scroll all the way up to the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to lesson one, creating activities. Remember that little bread trail, right? And if I click on that, if I scroll down a little bit, I see over my table of contents, I have two items now. Now, some of you at home that are watching this, you're going to see the double learning modules. That's because I have another student in here. Another student. I have another instructor in here following along. So as this uh, sandbox is being used by you from home, you're going to start seeing a lot of different learning modules coming up. Uh, what I'm going to do to make this clear for us, so if you could just wait a second, is I'm going to click on that learning module. And then I'm going to scroll all the way up top. And then I want to change this name. I'm going to click on it once. And then I'm going to come over here to the right, and in parentheses, I'm going to put that individual's initials in there. This way, when I start referencing it, I can see her initials here. So when I go back to my learning module, mine doesn't have the parentheses. So when you're doing this at home, please follow along. Just use your initials. It helps because we have a shared environment make this a little bit easier for us. Yeah. All right. Well, let's try something here. When Phil gave his demonstration, he went to the learning module like we are. So let's make sure we're in lesson one, creating activities. And we see that. We see our checklist. And we also see lesson one, Dropbox assignment, right? And I see it says C attachment. Unfortunately, the attachment doesn't show there. So if you want your students to see the attachment, all they have to do is click on lesson one. Now I'm going to go impersonate a student just like Phil did. So you can see what the student sees and how they can see the C attachment, if you will, if there was one. But most importantly, they have a due date, and it's there. Now, I had an instructor yesterday ask me, when you create a due date, does it automatically appear in the calendar? And the answer to that question is yes. So if I wanted to go up there and see that, go to Resources, and I'll click on Calendar. Now, there might be two assignments due, because like I said, I have another instructor in this classroom following along. And you see the 6th of December has a nice bold item. I click on it once, scroll down to the 5 o'clock marker, and you can see all those wonderful things that are due. And I'm sure that's going to happen over and over as you guys are doing this at home. Uh, don't worry. If it's your class and it's only you as the instructor, when you create an assignment, you only see one of them. But since we're sharing this in this classroom, you're going to see everybody do that. So this is a sandbox. I'm going to go to the communication menu. I'm going to click on class list. Now you might want to pick a different student to impersonate than the one that I'm going to pick. But I'm going to scroll down, and I was always a big fan of the Cookie Monster. So next to Cookie Monster, there's a little triangle pointing down. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click impersonate. Please, if you're doing that, find your favorite Sesame Street character and do the same thing. So I'm going to click yes. And now I'm stealing Cookie Monster's identity. You can see next to the, uh, sorry, in the upper right corner, it doesn't say Nick Andre anymore. It says Cookie Monster, and it's red because I'm impersonating him. This is a really cool idea. If a student sends you an email saying I had a problem with D2L and I couldn't attach this assignment to the Dropbox assignment, you can go into your class list, impersonate the student, and then attach that item in the Dropbox folder. So when you're grading and downloading all the attached files, now you have them all intact. So it's OK to steal students' identities for that purpose, and only that purpose. All right, so here I am, the Cookie Monster. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the content link. And as you can see, I see the GD, that was the other instructor in here doing this. But I also see mine. I'm going to do mine. The other instructor will do hers. So I'm going to click on Learning Modules. And one of the things I want to bring to your attention is the content summary area. Oh, sorry, the completion summary. Do you notice as a student, when I click on Learning Modules, and then over here in the content area, I have this like status bar, and it says 0%, 0 of two topics. Uh, I think this is a really cool feature when it comes to D2L 10.2. And, and, and hopefully your students don't mistake it as a grade. What they should see it as is where they are in the course. 
have you completed those topics? So if you haven't done anything, there's going to be zero. That means there's not going to be a blue bar letting you know where you're at in the course. And the other thing you want to notice is that this is the overall status bar for this learning module. If I want to see my status for lesson one is, I'm going to click on that, and you can see that changed. And because there's only two topics for that particular lesson, I'm sort of mirroring learning module. But let's see what happens if I were to click on lesson one instructions. All right, it's letting me know tasks you've completed zero out of zero items because I haven't quite, I haven't enabled this as a automatic thing. But let me go back to lesson one, creating activities. Remember, I'm acting like Cookie Monster. No percentage there, right? We'll get back to that in a second. But let me come down here to lesson one assignment. So I'm going to click on that. Now the student sees if there was an attachment above submission, the attachment. And if I click on the upload button, much like what Phil did, I'm going to navigate my way to DR. Now if you're trying this in the lab, just go ahead and pick some random file. A picture would be fine. Of course. So I'm going to actually upload this file. And I'm going to submit to the Dropbox. Just like in 10.0, an email confirmation sent to your students letting know that they received it. Over here though, in the right area, remember that completion summary I was talking about? Do you see what says completion tracking? Pat at your students on the back saying, well done, you completed the assignment. Well, let's scroll up top and let's click on lesson one, creating activities. Watch what happens now. Hey, I'm 50% done. So when a student comes into a learning module, they can see what activities they accomplished. Here in lesson one assignment, I have a little, great, a little check mark letting me know that's done. I've submitted that. Now the checklist personally, I'm not sure if I would even make that a required item to keep track of in the completion process. And if I do, I would make it manual for the student. But I'm going to explain that in a later video. So please stay tuned to the Mansfield uh, Instructional Designer channel on YouTube, and you'll see that on how to customize your activities with three different types of completion traction. Automatic, like you saw in the Dropbox. Manual, like you'll see later in the video, as well as just don't track at all. Because eventually students, especially your um, students that pay attention to details, are going to get really panicked. I'm only going to get an F for this course. I thought I did all my work. And that's just because the checklist wasn't being tracked. So we'll get into that later. But the neat thing is, student actually gets to see their progress from module or module. The instruction, the checklist that I have, tells them what they need to complete. When they do complete it, it's checking it off. I like that. But what does it look like for the instructor? So now I'm going to stop impersonating the cookie monster. And for everybody else, you can sing along because you should see this assignment being posted. So I'm going to go back here to restore. And what I'm going to do is come back to the content area. Remember, that's the main place now. We're trying to keep everything consistent in one location. So I'm going to go to the content area. And please do the same thing. Even if you weren't able to impersonate a student, come to My Learning Modules and then click on My Lesson 1 Creating Activities. Scroll down over on the right side and choose Lesson 1 Assignment. Do you see that complete tracking property required automatically? Let's keep on scrolling down to the bottom until I see Completion Summary. Now, when I see something like that, I'm thinking it's just a piece of text. Nothing can happen, right? Let me hover over that. Oh, my cursor changed. So let me click there. And this is another neat feature about D2L 10.2. Give it some time to load up, but what you're going to see is a list of all your students. Because my filter that I have turned on is all. But what if all I want to see is those that have completed the assignment? So let me click on completed. And I see Cookie Monster, nice little picture of Cookie Monster. And then if I hover over that picture, I have his profile. So if I wanted to, I can send him an email right from here, really quick. And if he was online, 
this dot next to his name would be green, and I could send him a quick page letting him know, hey, let's chat in real time. Let's you go. Now, if I wanted to actually view the uh, submission that he sent in there, I'm going to click on his name. So please do so. And this allow me to evaluate his submission. And just like in 10.0, the document view is over on the left, and the property screen is over on the right. Now with my small resolution, I don't have enough to the left, so I'm going to position my cursor over this middle bar, click and hold, I'm going to drag that to the right a little bit to make that smaller and give me more space over here. So when I click on directions-dr, I'll be able to do what Phil did, and I'll be able to see exactly what he has. Now you might want to download this file so you can mark it up and then resubmit it as a feedback. Phil and I will be going over another part of that. So once again, I know I'm putting a shameless plug in here, but I'm going to do that. Please follow us on the Mansfield YouTube channel. That is the Mansfield, uh, I think we called it Instructional Designer. And every once in a while, I'll be throwing little couple minute videos to show you new features to help enhance your experience using D2L. So I look it over and Phil, we said what? I think uh, De uh, Dakota Red Redstone got an eight out of 10. Yeah, I'm, I'm suspicious. I'm seeing some similarities here. We might want to do one of those sessions on uh, the Turn It In plugin. You got a good idea. I think that's true because you know. I don't Cookie even think Monster. he changed the name of the file. Cookie Monster's looking a little goofy. And uh, he copied off a of decoder, or maybe Dakota to copy it off of him. That, that could be. One of them's getting a zero. So Cookie Monster's getting a zero. Slides a zero almost looks like the letter C. And I'm going to come back down here where it says feedback. Come and see me. And I'm going to publish this. So the grading part of 10.2 really hasn't changed, and when I get done, it actually takes me back to the old view of 10.0, seeing Cookie Monster in his assessment, and it was published, so now he can see what he got. But the neat thing is, if you allow me to go back, as I scroll all the way up to the top, I'm going to click on the Content tool, and I'm going to make sure I'm in Lesson 1, Creating Activities, and then I'm going to click on Lesson 1 Assignment. Click on that completion summary. And if I scroll down, I see that Cookie Monster has submitted. It's been graded because it's 0 out of 10. It's not dash out of 10. Dash is indicating that it hasn't received a grade. A 0 is you got a grade and you did really poor.